One minute, Jan. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Camden Select Board meeting for November 1st, 2022. Uh, a few uh, um, introductory remarks. Basically, we are streaming on YouTube, the uh, uh, Town of Camden, uh, Maine YouTube channel, and we are also on a Zoom webinar. The Zoom link can be found uh, on our agenda, which is located on the town's website on the select board and the select board meetings for November 1st. You'll see it at the top of the agenda. As far as Zoom goes, we uh, treat everybody as, as, as we would uh, on Zoom as we would here. Uh, do not use the chat function. Please raise your hand if you'd like to comment or question uh, one of our agenda items. That's the preferred method. We would appreciate that. And with that, we will call the meeting to order. And we will start our agenda with any public comments on non-agenda items. Anybody here with a non-agenda item? Not seeing any hands. Uh, Parking comment? Is that you can make a comment on it, sure. Oh, it is? Uh, no, it's not. So, on the agenda. But I hope not. <laughs> but, yeah, please identify. <laughs> Mentioned public parking, and I thought, oh, no. oh sidewalk parking, people oh. parking, just a general no. grievance. Okay. So, <laughs> just in, in, so, okay. introduce yourself. You have about three. Marty Wolf, Brockbrook Drive, Camden. And I'm come to talk about the public parking pilot. I should say that slowly. And just a little feedback, because I understand it's a pilot, and you've gone through a summer, and it's feedback time. And I hear feedback all the time on the street and cocktail parties. And <laughs> I thought, gee, you know, I need to just kind of put in and let you folks know my feedback. And so just as um, our little town, um, I understand the difficulties I, I, of monitoring parking, especially in the public landing, and that we're looking for solutions to making that easier to manage. And in doing that um, this way, as a taxpayer, I just feel kind of like a, I'm paying for my parking, and it feels kind of like double dipping. But um, from a taxpayer's point of view, and if I were also a, if I also were a finger float person or a dinghy permit, I've always paying for that service, and then I have to pay to park. Again, I feel like I'm triple dipped, and, you know, getting hit three times. So um, I just wanted to mention that. I wish I had a solution. Um, I'd love to see residents with a sticker, and that you, you just you park for your two hours. And I say it's three. If you, I'm, I've seen mixed numbers on the websites. I've been looking to see how our parking is advertised on sure. the websites. And um, so I got a conflicting um, information, whether it's two or three. But I think it's two, and then you can buy an extra hour. Is that the way it goes? No? How does that work? Yeah, it doesn't you, matter. Right. It, the point is, um, it's confusing. you got my point. You, if you have any questions, please feel free to email us so we can give you answers to those okay. kind of questions. OK, so the solution. So the sticker or some kind of something for residents, just say that I'm a resident. I can, I'm going to park here for two hours or whatever the time is. Um, and I don't know about resident offenders, how they handle that. Um, public shaming is probably not appropriate in <laughs> 2022, but I don't know. Um, and I thank you for the you know, the work on this and trying to figure it out. But well, thank you, thank you very much for coming and giving us your comments live. We love it. Welcome, Mr. Bob. Have a good day. You too. Talk to you soon. Uh, with that, um, I don't think anybody got any public comments. I didn't see any other hands. We will move to item two, which is the approval of the board minutes from October 18th, 2022. Any comments, changes, or motion to approve? Uh, motion to approve the board minutes for October 18th. I second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? Not seeing any hands. I'll call for a roll call vote. All in favor? Four, zero. Um, roll call vote. Yeah, whatever. That's not a roll call vote, is it? We'll go backwards now. I was gonna say, uh. <laughs> <laughs> On our consent agenda tonight, we have the, um, we have renewal of lodging and Vittler licenses for the Camden Windward House, Frenny's Bistro, the Owl and Turtle Bookshop, and Cafe and the town hotel. Are there any objections to the items in the consent agenda this evening? Not hearing any, these items are hereby adopted. On to our item four, which is action items. We have uh, uh, an action to appoint 
committee members for Camden's planning board. The uh, resumes or the applications of certain individuals are in the packet. And I guess, in, Audrey, we can summarize how many vacancies we have right now for the, for the public and what we're trying to fill. It's in the packet. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to say it for the public. Is it all. in the packet? Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a, there's a current roster. Let me just, I was being lazy, didn't want to have to slide <laughs> down to it. But I couldn't get away with it. Not with this group. Let's see. I believe it's page 28 of 28. the PDF. 28, 728, here it is. Well, 28 is the first uh, uh, person applying, but I just wanted to summarize for us. We have three or four of those, but there's a, uh, a here it so is. You've got we, we, a, have, we have, um, we have, so you've got we have two, two um, members, current members who want to re-up whose term ends this year. So that's Ethan Shaw, who's the chair, and Pat Chen. And then you have uh, two vacancies of regular members. So one was the um, Mark Siegenthaler, and then the other is Anita Brosha Scott, and also a vacancy of an alternate member. Okay. Okay. So Mark Siegenthaler and Anita are not. Correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. And we only have one new application. Did I, am I, did um, I see that correctly? Well, or so we have piece of and, and Mark Chen. Murray. I know, but Ethan's not new. No, he's not, neither is Pat oh, Chen. Yeah, good point. Uh, Christopher uh, Rold. He's existing. Oh. Existing. And Andrew Smith, existing. So we went to. Mark two. Murray is Mark the. Mark Murray, yeah. Oh, I see. Mark Murray is the only new one. Right. I see. And his, his application or uh, is in the The first one is on page 28. You're right. Got it. That's what I saw. So that won't even, just even appointing we were sure him will we'll still. I mean, well, we would have, that. we would have, um, you're right. We would be short one member and, uh, and, and uh, uh, an, an alternate. An alternate. Right. So what is Mark Andrew, seems like a, to me. Why, why wouldn't, is Andrew Smith expiring this year also? He's an alternate now, but I think he wants to drop off because he's out of town so much. Oh, that's really good, though. I know I was going to suggest. Let's talk to him. He's too busy with his work. Too busy with his work. So we're real. Because he can participate on Zoom. It's true. I don't think we should lose Andrew quite so easily. Well, um, I was going to suggest we move. <laughs> I was going to suggest we move him up to a, to a member. Yeah, but that's what I was going to do, too. Let's could do that and, that and twist his arm. Um, um, but and then we'll have an alternate for, to replace him when he's not there. Correct. That's the idea. That's correct. We'll need to recruit an alternate. So I guess I would suggest we re-up re Shaw, Ethan, and Pat Chen. Um, All right. Sorry? And we'll re-up those two and then appoint Mark, a new member. Um, as. No, you're right. Just re-up those two first. Okay. And move that. that uh, make a motion with that, Sophie. I, I, yeah, I make a motion that we reappoint uh, Ethan Shaw and Mark and Andrew Smith. Is that what we No, doing? no, no, no. Pat Chen and Ethan Shaw for another, how long is the term? Three years. Three-year three, three year so term. So I make a motion that we reappoint Ethan Shaw and Pat Chen for a three-year term. Correct. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye, yes. Okay, those, those, those two are re-opt. Now, oh, hold on. Holly says that the sound is not working on YouTube. YouTube. She says she trusts that we know that, but I believe we do not. No, I don't look at me. Should I maybe start an alternate live stream from the Zoom just in case, or? Wouldn't hurt. All right. So that we, well, while we're waiting to put that up, Mark. As, as so I make a motion that we re-up Ethan Shaw and Pat Chen, or because they didn't hear it on Zoom. Is it still legal? Well, it's not. Yeah. I don't have that. It is. It is. Okay. It is. It is. It, it's a matter of record. We're still. <laughs> this meeting is still being. They heard streamed. it on Zoom, just maybe not on YouTube. Right. Okay. And besides, the meeting minutes are always there to cover that. <laughs> okay. um, to the second part of this, which is basically to uh, uh, nominate, uh, if we want, Mark for the vacant position for a three-year term. So I do. Allison. Do we want a lot of the time um, we start with people as alternates and then 
okay? As long as we move Andrew up to a regular member. I mean, we can always make changes. I, I agree. Are you suggesting we move to make Mark an, an alternate on the board? Yeah. And then it, it sounds like he'll have a pretty quick progression to. Yep. But then he knows at least what for sure yep. what he's getting into. And That's right. That's not right. everybody lasts on the planning board. So just to be clear, if we do that, yeah. we have no alternates and we're still down one ranking member. Well, excuse me, Mark would be an alternate and we'd still be down one, one regular one member. ranking two. member. Two. 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 two, 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 two ranking members. Two. But we're, we're, we're contemplating. Andrew Smith. Yeah, we're contemplating twisting Andrew's arm. That'll be the next step. So why don't we move to to uh, um, uh, place Mark as an alternate? So I so moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Four zero. Thank you. Now, to the uh, Christopher. Oh, we have a hand raised here. It's Jeremy. Right. Um, so the only other uh, Christopher is 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 pulling off. Is that correct? I've forgotten already. Christopher. Rolf. Christopher. Rolf. Chris. Chris Rolf. No, he's, he's still, he's still on there. Twenty three. So we got one, Smith. two, three regular members, one alternate, and we haven't. Uh, I suggest we uh, nominate Andrew Smith as a, as a regular member and hope, hope we can f get another alternate to fill the void. You're, you, you have a cringe in your face, Audra. Well, why we're you, doing something wrong. Why don't you just bring Jeremy on? To, oh, yeah. I can do that. Yeah. I was going, that's why I was waiting for. Okay. Yeah. Um, I got it. Okay. I had it. What happened? What All right. Happened? Actually, this will be your test to see if you have the capability. Oh, okay. oh I knew what I'm saying. You've got to go under attendees. Yeah, yeah, I know that helps. <laughs> okay. He's going to tell us Andrew's absolutely unwilling. And <laughs> well, that's what I, I mean, you know, like, let's clear up the uh, confusion around that. Jeremy, can you hear us? I see his name there, but there is. Sometimes it just takes a second. Okay. Can you hear me now, Bob? I can, and I can yeah. see you too, with a ha with a halo behind your head. All right. So, Anita is off. Mark Siegenthaler is off. Andrew Smith has been a full time member, but as um, as everyone knows, I think his work schedule has taken him out of town quite a bit lately. He would prefer to become an alternate. Pat Chen, who's been a very good member, would like to be go from alternate to a full member, is what she would like. And Andrew would like to become an alternate. Okay, so we, Jeremy, we've already. And Ethan Shaw, Ethan Shaw would still be the chair, hopefully. Yeah, um, right. He's been a great chair. Right. Yeah, but we don't, they decide that. Huh? But we have Ethan and Pat are already been nominated and approved as regular members, so that's done. Um, uh, but we, we, uh, we also, we also, um, moved on Mark already, but you're saying he wants to be yeah. an alternate? Well, it's just Andrew As wants an to be an alternate because he feels bad about not being here all the time, but okay. there's going to be an alternate to replace him, so yeah, he doesn't agree. need we to feel be, bad. We can leave him as a full member if you'd like and have an alternate to replace him later. Yep, makes sense. Okay. All yeah. right, so we're done. We're done. Um, I we still need we still need a couple of members, but yes, we're done with the appointments for now. And while we're here, we probably got to look at changing the select board liaison. Yeah, I was going to suggest that. Which is currently listed as Mark Ratner, who has been for years. Yeah. Oh, I thought, um... We don't have to name one. I'm willing to do it. Fine. I was almost thinking you could do pathways, and I could. But yeah, you'd be good for that too. I... It's up to you, Tom. Sure. I said, like I said, I'm willing to do it. All right. So. Let's let's move to make Tom select board liaison. All right. Thank you. Yes, welcome. Thanks. Thank yeah, you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Yes. You're welcome. Let me just make a note of that before I forget. Tom, um, anytime you want to chat and I can bring you up to speed, feel free. Sounds Thank good. you very much, Jeremy. Appreciate it. Uh, back. Okay. Um, next item is to appoint uh, the appointment of committee members for the Cemetery Association. I didn't know that we were at that point. In terms of, I feel like we just did that. I thought we did year. too. But but then they they, well, I'm not going to say they expire because for the cemetery committees, oh, well, it's still Halloween. 
Um, yeah, yeah. No, but we have like Jeff Sukerforth, the chair, his term is expiring in 22, and Owen is expiring in 22, but they're both willing to re up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, there it. was an. But do we remember this? There was a kind of a situation. There was a, some discussion the last time mm -hmm. we did this, and there was a woman who seemed. She had filled out a, an application, and she was seemed quite qualified and um, wanted to get involved and I don't, is her thing in here? Um, I didn't, None of them from last. I didn't see anything else and I only saw Jeff and Owens. Uh, that's the two that are Isn't the woman that applied that she was interested in any committee? Is that well, there's that one, but I don't know if you remember. We could use that for the planning committee. Oh. I think there are a number of people that would be interested in the community that will serve on committees if, if we like put the word out. Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure that I know there was some um, frustration with the process last time for the cemetery committee appointments, possibly even some hurt feelings. Um, and I don't want to be dismissive or of that this time. I Didn't we have, I mean, we had, there was last time when we chose. I don't, yeah, I, I don't remember either. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. Do you want to table this is the reappointments until we figure out who this woman is and, and what to do with Jess, Jeff Sukerforth? Oh, I mean, I think Jeff Casas. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm asking. I'm just. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm I just got a lot of negative feedback about our decision last time, and um, I, know, I, I don't know. feel great about. The process well, because I feel like that it might well be it, 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 if the woman was interested, where's her application? That's right. I agree with that. We should we should I mean, we have to deal with what we have, what we know. I mean, we had a bunch of them. Do you remember what I'm talking about, Janice? I mean, of course, if there was another person that was. So, if you want to be on a committee, you fill out an application, and she we did, have two but but we have two applications. But we didn't say we were looking for new people, and now we're only considering the people that were on it. And applied. And applied. But they didn't just reapply. They, yeah, they did. They did. That's 10-26-22, October 26, 2022? Yeah. Yeah, they both reapplied. But when people put in an application and we don't choose them, they don't, that then we put their application in the trash? I have no idea. No, I have no idea. You know, there was Stewart, for instance. Um, I don't know if he withdrew his application. I just know a, what, a bunch of people that were upset about Audrey, this. Audrey, what is the town's policy on that? Do we make people reapply every year? Like, do, or is it just, do you keep them in a Rolodex? We ask them to fill out a new yeah, interest form if they're interested hmm. in serving again. Yeah, which makes sense. Otherwise, you might have an application on for two years. Yep. You know, and that's yep. uh, I think what Allison means yeah, is are we, are we advertising it more broadly than just to the people whose terms are expiring? And I, I don't think with this one we did. So I don't believe that the people that had applied last time and didn't get chosen, I don't believe that we then got back to them and said, hey, so you right. didn't make it onto the committee this time, but if, and so if you would like to be considered in the future, you should fill out the application. Uh, why don't we table and put it on the website? Again. That. We'll put in, um, we'll put in the table. We'll table it if the board approves, and we'll, we'll put it on the website or wherever we're advertising about mm -hmm. on the fifteenth, which is our next meeting. Uh, we'll uh, we'll be addressing at that point in time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I can have a motion to table this till the fifteenth, a date certain. So moved. A second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Four zero. Thank you very much. Um, on, the, on the appointment issue, we have one more appointment to the Knox County Budget Committee, and I believe we have one applicant. So, yeah, this is a little bit um, different because this is an, uh, typically an elected position, and because it's a county position, they have a whole other process than you can't come into the town and go through, uh, you know, like get your 25 names and submit it and you get on, on the local ballot. Like with a local office, you have to go through the whole state process to do it. So for that reason, um, you know, we rarely get, I think, people who are on the ballot for the budget committee. Um, you know, and, and the write-in process, you also have to register your intent to be a write-in candidate. So 
you know, usually that's how people make it on to the, or get elected to sure. be on the budget committee, but we didn't even have anyone who did that. So when there isn't somebody chosen through the election process, it's delegated to the select board to choose Camden's representative to the Knox County Budget Committee. Thank so you. that's why this is coming to us. Thank you for that explanation. That's very important. And we do have one applicant, I believe, um, that uh, has applied and we have in our packet. It's the only applicant we have at the moment. And full disclosure, I, I encouraged him to do that. He'll get even. <laughs> I'm sure he will. But I think he's, he's very, um, in, he wants to be involved in, in the town and in, in the county. Good. He has a financial background, so budget doesn't scare him. Um, and he's very dedicated to service. So um, I, I know him quite well because he's my neighbor. Um, but I would, I would be very happy if he served. I think he he's would be a really good He's also in the waiting room, too, if anybody... If Oh, uh, excellent. So yeah. he's... Um, um, I, no, my, my, we have one applicant. I'll move to approve. I move to that we approve... Uh, so is it the, the appointment? So I move to that we approve the appointment of Will Addis as Camden's representative to the Knox County Budget Committee? Correct. I have a second? Second. I'm getting so many messages Motion about the audio Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All's in favor? Four zero. Thank you very much. Thank you, Will, for your service. Yes, uh, continuing in all continuing, aspects. Continuing because he's on yeah. the know. conservation committee with Allison. I, I, I think. know he is. Versus uh, committee. And, and we really, we really appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Um, on to the uh, action item for the Coastal Mountain Land Trust Reve revocable. I almost got that one wrong. Revocable <laughs> license agreement. Can I make a suggestion on a point of order for this? Because yes, this sort of. Um, will bleed into the discussion item that's on the agenda next, and we have two guests that have come here to speak to it. Perfect. So I'd, I'd recommend that um, if you could, you know, move this item and second it for the purpose of discussion and then ask them to come up, you can talk about both the license agreement and, and the other their longer-term request. So you're asking us to approve the revocable license first? Well, hearing? not so you listen to them first and then approve. Fine them. with me. Well, Fine yeah, just me. just move it for the purposes of getting sure. to discussion. Sure. Second it. Motion made in the second. We're, we're going to have some discussion. Yeah. I've been told we're going to have some fun discussion. So please come on down. Out of here by seven. It's easy. I just get told what to do. Please introduce yourselves so we know, know who you are and uh, have a go. Sure, Ryan Gates, I'm the Stewardship Project Manager oh, and Director of the Stewardship Program at Coastal Mountains. Heather Rogers, I'm the Land Protection Program Director at Coastal Mountains Land Trust. Perfect. And you need to speak louder, I'm sorry, but... but just stay close to the mic when you speak. The micro, and just I have a bit very, louder because these, I can't. These suckers like you to be about here. Okay, I'll do it. You want me to say it again? The geriatric part of the board cannot hear you if you don't speak loud enough. Please. Okay. Um, well, we um, approached the town to ask if we could work with you to create better access to some of the land that we have um, preserved on Ragged Mountain. Mm -hmm. Specifically, um, off of Rollins Road, there's about a 100-acre parcel that we acquired um, last year that has become a really popular destination um, for mountain bikers and trail runners um, that... Um, is probably the flattest area and best designed for beginner bikers, young kids, um, to learn and develop better skills on their bikes. But getting there is pretty tricky. Um, getting from the snowball, um, the riding is very technical and steep. And then um, McNemba had some uh, getting to having kids ride in like big group and they would actually ride on Hosmer Pond Road with a police escort because they felt like they wanted to make sure the kids were safe. Um, so we don't have a great way to get people in there right now um, and the town owns a five acre parcel that would connect Rollins Road to the land that we own and um, it's already been used as an informal trail access now and we would love to formalize that and create a parking lot in that on that spot so that it would be mm. a safer place for people to access that mm. land. So that's our general idea, and we're grateful to have the opportunity to see 
what we can work can out. Show us what we're talking about in case anybody's not familiar with the area. Yeah. Sure. Where's this? Um, where, where do we go with this? Um, it's, in our package. it's in the packet. It's in the packet. Yeah. It's so. in the, that's, that's even better. And there's just a map. This is just a larger. Yeah, we can pop it up. Um, Look at us popping up some map on the screen like <laughs> Yeah. Hold on, let me. It's, it's in the packet, <laughs> very near the end. Let Allison. me um, just share my screen for all of our viewers on Zoom here. It's, it's after the revocable license. Thanks. Mm. While she's pulling that up, there's, there, there actually is a small parking area there now, correct? Is not. Uh, there is space for about two cars that's oh, sorry, actually sorry. on private. I said small. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's on private land. Oh. Um, and so someone is allowing oh. people to park oh, there. Oh, I see. There is a sign saying, if you would park at the snowball, we'd appreciate it. Oh. But so there's I really see. not actually I see. much legal parking keep, keep at all. Keep going, Alice, a little further. There you go. That's there it. There it is. We popped that on the may, screen. May I ask a question? Sure. The, the, the trails are bike trails only or multi mm -hmm. So. So can I go walk on those trails with my dog? Or absolutely, as long as your dog's on a leash. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, they were designed as bike trails. Um, the first trails probably went in 10 to 12 years ago. And uh, they were kind of put in as a rake and ride, so you rake it off and ride the trails in. And uh, over the last, let's say, two years, we formed a tighter partnership of which both wrote letters in the little packet. Um, in support, and we also got a main mountain bike fund grant this last year, um, which was about ten thousand dollars. So we've been in there making trails better, um, and we will be making the as part of that grant. We will be making signage better as well. Um, it is an area that is multi-use. However, it was established as a mountain bike trail right. first, not to give preference over one or the other. But hikers are always welcome. <clears throat> Thank you. No problem. It's really beautiful in there. The Goose River runs through there, and when right. there's a lot of water coming through, it's I, I, I have not explored all the trails it, yet. And it, I yeah. I also get lost in my own backyard. So. Yeah. Yeah. In, <laughs> in this map, you can see that we've kind of outlined, kind of, you know, and identified where our bottlenecks or where our roadblocks were. So you can see, like, Dirt Road and Golden, you know, Golden Pond Road don't connect to the Snow Bowl except right. through public access. Right. So beginner mountain bike or, or novice even road riders are riding along Barnstown Road. As we all know, it's, you know, the speed limit's, I think, 35. People go faster. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of winds along the lake, and not everybody's focused on the road all the time. Mm -hmm. So it does create kind of a safety issue. Um, so just to be clear, the piece of property you're talking about is this. I wonder if I can make this thing work. Outlined in red. I can't do it with this. Here. It's too far away. Yeah, outlined in red. Uh, yep. Thanks, Allison. Uh, that four and a half acre parcel right there. Correct. Yep, and the, and the Goose River runs right through the, it kind of bisects the property. Oh. So oh. it narrows oh, like yeah, the usable yeah. space either side. Yeah, I see it. And so you want to put the parking, I guess I had, oh, that place where you can park now, I didn't realize, I got in my head that that was the town property. Yeah, no, it's um, actually a private, yeah, private parcel. Oops. Um, and, um, um, yeah, <laughs> I mean. So, and how much, I can't quite picture it, how much, needs to be done in order to create parking on so the I, th I think what we are kind of envisioning is there's a there's a wooden ramp there now and yep. it'd be a six to eight car lot that would be outside of the 75 foot step back from the from the river for shoreland zoning but i think with a full permit we could get a nicely designed trailhead and parking lot in there and we're not talking about like an 18 car parking lot we're talking about a like a you know six car six to eight car maximum yeah, yeah. like a place for younger families to drop drop kids off and then maybe park at the snow bowl it's not really that there isn't an option to park many cars there it's just like getting a few cars to right. get closer right um so oh yeah really what and how quickly could you move forward with that uh with a parking lot yeah I hate that word parking lot. So, yeah, um, uh, like, trailhead. Trailhead, we'll, we'll go with, uh, trailhead. congregating yeah. area. Or, um. Um, yeah, I mean, depending on contractors, yeah. um, we could we have two quotes already. Really? So it could, it could be as early as next, next spring or summer. And just for the sake of clarity, this, we're not talking about a paved parking lot, correct? Correct. I, I think, um, but I would like to see it either, um, either 
like compacted inch minus or reclaimed right. asphalt right. just right. for just the binding capability sure. and so to kind of mitigate runoff sure so that we're not putting phosphorus into the that river. makes sense i mean a lot of the time pavement, people think that it's always better to not have pavement but sometimes it it is like well better designed with when, catch with catch basins or uh, like you know something I mean, drainage, proper drain, drainage yeah proper drainage to kind of it's give us drainage a, Yep. Permeable pavement, actually, that would be a good, like what we did over on the mm -hmm. alleyway here. Mm -hmm. We could get, sometimes they'll do that for free as a demonstration project. Mm -hmm. Again, to summarize, this revocable license is for this four and a half acre piece of land to be licensed to um, them, uh, and, and then that morphs into the second part of discussion. Is that correct? That's correct. Do you want to discuss that a little bit? Or do you want uh, us to? Um, well, I guess if you had any questions, I think, and I'll let Heather kind of feel this as well, but I think we wrote a letter in hopes of conservation. We're not really telling the town how we want to see it conserved by any means. It's just like, what are we open to? How can we move forward? I think the, right. I think the lease agreement was kind of the avenue that Audra asked us to put in front of you all sure. with this letter and then kind of see where it went from there. Okay. But okay. If there was anything yeah. else. I mean, we might as well just enshrine it so that no future town of Camden, you know, group that wants to destroy it somehow. Not that that's going to happen, but it seems like it's a really appropriate parcel to put under your care. Yeah. Um, and I mean, just to give you scope, we didn't include, but I brought, and it's kind of wrinkled up because it's been in my truck, but I brought a survey with all the trails. Yep. And, um, and just kind of gives you a proclamation of boundary lines and that stuff. And this would be the town piece here. We have another we have another parcel that goes out to Wiley Road, um, and we kind of research that um, to try and bring another bridge and maybe put a car congregation area in over there. Mm -hmm. But this seems like it makes more sense to right. kind of partner right. with the town for sure. There's like 13 acres over there too. That mm -hmm. it's just so the um, town so our, our action tonight is to approve the revocable. I'll get that word out yet. <laughs> revocable license. Uh, as uh, are there any comments from the board about the revocable license? No, I just have. So I just have a question. So we're at, if we grant a revocable license, yes. it doesn't preclude us from acting on, on the transfer, or is the transfer just for discussion? You're talking about tr the transfers, you're talking about transfer of ownership? Right. Well, one, uh, to be clear, that has to be approved by the voters. By the voters, that's, and that's two, what I thought. And so, two, okay. that's why, we, we, that's why it. it's the discussion. Because we, we can, only thing we can do is next year, mm -hmm. we could contemplate as a board Put it on bringing a, it on a warrant for, if we approve, uh, for next uh, June's election. Okay. But we, that's why it's discussion, but they're connected because there's obviously a desire to, you know, take control of this piece of land and not have to go uh, back and forth with, with the revoc continuing with the revocable license. But tonight, the only thing we can do is approve or disapprove okay. the revocable license agreement. I get it now. Hmm? Yep. I have a motion. Oh, I'm sorry, Alison, go ahead. So would this be, or is this a time that you're looking for input on the other part too? Why, why is that a discussion item? If well, it's just, it be only because we, can, we can talk about it more, but um, um, because we can't do anything about it, we can certainly talk about it, but, and we will need to talk about it, but not, but really don't, not at this point, because we can't really take any action on it until next year anyway. I mean, but it would be kind of one of those things that we have a pretty simple template that's already there. We've given mm -hmm. land to Coastal Mountains Land Trust before. Mm -hmm. If we were to just, mm -hmm. as a group, I mean, I don't know if everybody is feeling the same way I am, but I feel like it's one of those things that probably doesn't need too much hemming and hawing. It could, it's an easy to understand issue for the voters. It would go on the ballot and you know, we could just be kind of giving our nod to, to staff to say just, no, I'm, I'm not ready to give that nod yet. It's too soon. We just heard about it, and I want to give more contemplation before I say there's any nod for it at this point in time, but I'm sure we'll be discussing it, or if the board approves, we'll be discussing it early next year. I would like to say, just getting back to your question, Allison, with like our timeline of a year or that, I think Coastal Mountains would feel a lot more comfortable if we came up with a conservation, like, more formalized conservation yes. than, than a one-year revocable you yes, know, absolutely. lease to then put we, we know, income that. and parking lots we, and infrastructure in. Right. I think we're just really trying right. to establish, establish the use of the property now, and then wherever the conservation effort takes us, our end goal would be to have a parking lot. Exactly. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Okay, so you're not going to put the parking lot in until 
Yeah. I, I don't think it's a wise move. You know, I, I think we sort things out and let the townspeople kind of speak as well. Agreed. So I guess that's kind of why I would want to have it on a, a as fast a track as yep. possible because I, I think every I think it's going to be widely supported and that if we can add a little bit more access there, I do too. That's a just an immediate benefit too. to everybody. So there's. Yep, we're only two months from next year. Mm -hmm. And if I, I, but if I may, I mean, there are board members on there are members on this board, myself included, that have never proceeded through giving a piece of property. Yeah. So I think I would really like understanding the process and yeah. you know how we go about this and yeah. make sure that we get all our ducks in a row to put it on the ballot. But Understood. I have. I need to educate myself to make sure that you know we do it properly. I mean, that's 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 a request to the board. I understand, and I think there's 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 nothing we can do at this moment to make it move faster than next June's election. We understand that. Yeah. However, I agree with Alice, and I think there's tremendous support behind it, and we just have to get it into the cycle, probably the first of next year, to start developing the warrant for more public education. Mm -hmm. That's all. So I have a motion to approve the revocable license agreement. Uh, yeah, I make, make a one? motion that we approve the revocable license. We have a second. Do we have a second? We may have already done that, but I, I, we I did. need to again. Uh, yeah, we, we, we actually actually did because we started this whole thing. Discussion. Did discussion. So <laughs> I'll go for a vote by the board. All those in favor of the approval. Four zero. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Oh, thank and you. And if anybody ever wants to go for a walk. Come on out. Definitely sure. do it. And just, be, you know, just before they leave, because this is a really good opportunity, if you have any questions, not about the process, because the process is fairly simple and, is. and we can take care of it, but I guess if you have any questions about, you know, Coastal Mountain Land Trust and how they, you know, land management or the, how it fits into the broader strategy they have or anything right. like that that would help you for that final decision making, now's a really good chance so that Heather and Ryan don't have to unnecessarily come back in. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, you don't like coming here? We're happy to come anytime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, they're going to say they I, would prefer to answer them tonight as opposed to come <laughs> back to another meeting, but. So in, One at a time, please. Um, <laughs> um, does anybody have any questions for them while they're here on, with regard to the, to the future of Bellis Ford and Half Acre property? I do have a question. <laughs> no, so, so. Um, I come from France, as you know, and in France we have a really good system about marking trails mm -hmm. in terms of difficulty and level of expertise. And every time I go on a trail in the U.S., I'm like, oh man, we really need to import our system because it's so much better than what's in the U.S. So I'm just wondering if it's something you might consider to use, I mean, you, you know. France system? Well, yeah, because, because I, I know exactly at the trailhead mm -hmm. which one I can go on safely and not, you know, be overwhelmed. It's, right. a, it's, the, it's a very similar system than uh, ski like trails. Yeah. So, yeah, thing. exactly, because it, it's actually European now. It's, it's, it's Europe. yeah. That's exactly what we intend to do, is cool. kind of copy the, the Nordic skiing or the or, or yeah. alpine skiing, yeah. you know, blue, blue, or green being the easiest beginner, blue being intermediate, and then black being expert, or. I'd like to, I'd like to double green. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what we're excited more. Thank you. And that's going to be adopted through, all, in all the, lens you manage that's going to be uh, or little by little i would little, say like i would say the bike trails okay but probably not hiking well i don't like to predict anything i think the path forward will be paved with flowers thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> thank you thanks so much. Very much thanks for coming and appreciate off hours it. for dogs appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate it with that thank we'll, you we'll move to audra's management report I must apologize. I did not prepare one for you all tonight. Oh, mommy speaking. On the 15th. Mommy speaking is in your stead? No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Tom, do you have anything you want to add? No, I do not. Thank you. Ms. Sophie. Um, the, the only thing I can report on, two things. Um, uh, I attended, a, this is, there's an echo. It's right there. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, I attended the, a library board of trustees, which was super interesting. 
And um, I talked about the Megunti Cook River project, and they wanted to have more information. And they pointed out that we needed to do a better job about providing regular information. So we, we actually, it dovetails into my second point, that we just had another meeting of the Megunti Cook River Citizens Advisory Committee, uh, which is really a fantastic group of people, it's super dedicated, and they work really well together. And we're going to be working on increasing points of contact with the public where they can get information. Yeah. And in particular, we're going to have a table at uh, during the polls so people can get information and also give us some questions. So these are the two committees I, I attended in the past two weeks. And I want to thank uh, both committees for giving me the time, first of all, the library to talk about the project, but also really, again, salute the engagement and participation of the, the advisory committee for the river. The really good group of people. Great. That's it. Allison. Um, I haven't reported on the, um, I've had a number of pathways committee meetings um, without um, reporting back. Um, the pathways committee, um, as I don't know how many, I realize a lot of people are n new, and so we haven't maybe had like a pathways committee representative come in and you know, ever give an update on just you know, what they've been working on over the years and what their priorities are now. They're um, a committee that we have jointly with Rockport. Um, and we're, they were formed in like 1999, 2000, really with a specific purpose of trying to create um, and improve um, walkability and connectivity between the two towns. Um, so that was like the, especially downtown Camden to the high school when the high school moved out of town. Mm -hmm. um, that was all voted on by voters as a priority for both towns. Um, there was grant money involved. Um, that project sort of fizzled out a little bit over the years um, and they, um, you know, they're the main group behind the river walk for instance, and all the, you know, the progress that's been made there. They have a Pathways Committee master plan um, that you know, factors into our downtown master plan. Well, basically all this planning that has happened in the past, um, which does connect a little bit to some of the discussions that we've been having about things like the Elm Street sidewalk. So the Pathways Committee every year um, goes through in both towns and identifies, um, Actually, it's not every year, it's every few years, because not that much changes um, very fast around here. Um, you know, identifies issues in the sidewalks, um, you know, places where there are maintenance problems. The, uh, the Elm Street sidewalk, you know, is one that has just come up over and over again, and they've um, basically dedicated themselves to haunting Rick Seibel over the years, trying to get him to come up with workaround solutions on that sidewalk, one of the main things being um, pushing for something called, they were calling pave arounds. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with all these obstructions in the sidewalk, the idea was if we can just get all the property owners to agree to let us, and we've done it in a few places in town, like pave around the um, obstruction, usually a telephone pole, mm -hmm. that that creates a plowable um, spot. Um, it's really not, you know, the I ideal solution. It's sort of the best they've come up with since we haven't come up, we haven't really fixed the problem. But um, anyway, there are a number of issues like that, and it, you know, realizing as new people come on the Pathways Committee too, there's a lot of history of like town planning that's happened, like the downtown master plan, for instance, um, that um, it would be good, I think, to, it took me a while of like citizen advocacy, pointing different things out to me to get me to look at like, oh, look at this process that they went through in 2012 where everybody voted to make this sidewalk better and this sidewalk better and all these things. Um, so talking about sort of how we can create maybe an update to that and a primer for new, um, you know, people, people like me or like anybody that come into town government having lived here for a long time but maybe not knowing some of the planning that's already mm -hmm. gone forward. So um, they've been, um, we've been talking about, about that some and also we had a Midcoast Solid Waste meeting um, and that um, is really interesting for anybody that likes to talk about pumping from the landfill. So um, one of the things, a big expense coming up is we're gonna be replacing the, um, the wells that are basically like really you know, deep wells that are dug down into the, drilled down into the landfill to monitor the level of water in the landfill. And then there's one that's an extraction well and then one that's a monitoring well and they both need um, some 
rehab in order to be able to um, to monitor the water and then it all gets pumped to the Camden wastewater treatment plant. Um, so we have made some improvements over there um, in the ability to monitor it. There's now like a remote, you just have to go over and always measure the water and then go over to this other building and shut off the pump or turn on the pump and turn off, it's a very laborious process. Now they've gotten it so it can be monitored remotely and shut off remotely too, which is a big deal because one of the things the landfill was always supposed to be doing is when we get these big rain events, since we have overflows in the system, you're, they're supposed to be shutting um, the pumps off over in the landfill so that it doesn't, that water all goes down um, to the Baby Street pump station, which is one of the ones that overflows. So it's important that we can keep the landfill leachate level lower all the time so that we have a buffer, so that when Camden's get in, getting inundated by all this water, um, through rain events, we're not, there's no reason to be adding to it with leachate at that point. So after many years, we're finally at the point where somebody can say, oh, look, it's raining really hard. Let me pull up the app. Stop pumping more water to the Camden Yacht Club <laughs> parking lot where it's overflowing. So that's, yeah. That's well, that was uh, one, uh, one point, important point to the public, and they may already know, but the reason for water control in the, in the landfill is because there's a pond right behind us called Lily Pond, mm -hmm. and we're required to keep the water level in the landfill below that level to obviously to force any leaching of water from the pond to the landfill and not the other way around. Right, for years yes, it did go the other this, way. This is the purpose of all of this control and pumping that is essential because we're adjacent to a pond. You're right, and we don't have a nor you know normal landfill would have been sited and you know high and dry, and what we have is just a really deep right. hole so in the makes, ground. Makes, that... makes our landfill more complicated than some, unfortunately. But we get to play with that. Um, it, that it okay. The only other quick thing is, week from tonight is election night, so everybody get your votes in, get that stuff done. Other than that, um, I think that's about it. So I have a motion to adjourn in this record time. Make a motion to adjourn the select board meeting. Second. Discussion. Those in favor? 4-0. Thank you very much, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Vote. <laughs>